Galactic Standard Date. Year 11356. Day 95. Soul Standard Date. 4th of the 7th, 3267. Basilus was sitting in the darkroom he had created. He had finished processing the shock of it all with the revelation that, for him to still be capable of having an emotional breakdown, he hadn't yet lost his humanity. He is just a man with the powers of a god. I have a great power, and with great power does indeed come great responsibility. I am to be cursed to be forever viewed in the light of a god. I have to truly live up to these expectations. He stood up, sighed, and then said, Can't mope around forever. I've got people to save and Lovecraftian asses to kick. As he stuck his free fist through the wall and brought the whole room down. Amaranth was watching the little box with some trepidation, as she was worried that he wouldn't yet be in his right mind. When his fist broke through the wall and the box came down, her breath caught. She could feel his connection to her open back up, flooding her mind with exactly what he was feeling. It was not the great anguish she had felt before. No, she could feel only a fiery determination from him. When the rubble fell away completely, she looked into his eyes and saw a fire there. It was not the usual pale green fire that she was used to seeing. No, his iris was still lit with the green tint. However, deep within she could see a massive red inferno, but it was not an all-consuming flame. It was restrained power. He had reined in his abilities. Amaram smiled at her revelation. Basilus turned around and faced a mob of spooder people that had congregated around him in the few minutes he had been in the box. He set his jaw straight and stood to his full height, unfurling his steel wings and letting the energies of the veil flow through him as he created a massive image of himself in a pale green fire that overlooked the peoples of the Roseri homeworld. When he spoke, it was in an otherworldly, godlike voice that resonated within the minds of all present, as though he was right next to them. I am truly sorry for the misfortunes that Mel has visited upon you, simply despite me. I am sorry for being weak and forgetting myself for the time I had locked myself away. Most importantly, I am sorry for pushing aside your wants for my own. That was selfish of me. I do hope that you will not worship me as a god, but treat me as a friend. However, to this end, I have no power over you. Do as you wish. I will simply continue as I have been and crush that insolent little bastard who has caused all this hardship. Now, to all you survivors... Continue to fucking survive. Break the Azarian lines. Become greater, he said, as he snapped his flaming visage from existence. He slowly walked towards Razaria and looked down at her. To that end, High Queen Razaria of the Razarian race, I need information on every single polity, room world, and space station that is within your databases. I need to know where he is hitting. Razaria was frozen in place, just staring up at the massive, glowing form behind her. Tears welled up in her eyes simply from the brightness of the power that was radiating from him. Yes, my lord. I will have Brands collect all the necessary information right away. She shuffled around a bit before deciding to ask the question that had been burning on her mind since she saw him appear on her world. When did you get wings and why wasn't the light of your power even a quarter as bright earlier as it was in the video you broadcast on the GZ? Of course you have both the wings and the light of power from before. Now, actually, the light seems brighter. Basilus cocked an eyebrow at her. What? What do you mean by the light of power? Also, you couldn't see my wings before? Rosaria tilted her head in confusion. Well, I can see a bright green light shining out from you in every direction. I'm veil touched, so maybe that's why. I drank too much veil in one crazy night, and I witnessed the veil. Ever since then, no changes have been found, so I thought I was one of the lucky ones who experienced no changes, whether blessing or curse. But looking at you and that giant beast that forced alongside you, I can tell what my blessing was now. Usually those come with the curses, though, so... Basilus cupped his chin for a moment before letting out a tired sounding. Ah, uh, I think I know what happened with the wings being invisible to you and my power not being as bright as it was. It's because that beast is the previous goddess of death. She now exists as the aspect of hatred as I've taken her role as the Reaper. She likes to change into a small human form and ride on my back, right in between my wings, actually. At that time, I was not a god, I was simply a half-god. You probably couldn't see part of me through her radiance of power, or whatever. Still, that's an incredible ability, I wonder. Basilus narrowed his eyes as he tried to focus on the veil energies that he knew existed all around him. After a solid minute of staring so hard at the poor spider, the world went grey. Everything except for a tiny green flame that he could see at Rosaria's core. He gasped at the realisation that it wasn't only her. Thousands of the Rosarians had green flames. Some as small as a birthday candle's flame, some as big as a baseball. 
He snapped his attention back to Amaranth, and he could see the raging inferno of power within her, creating a beacon of light. Basilus then turned back to Rezaria. Rezaria, I have a question for you. Why are there so many of your people with the same spark that you have? Rezaria spussed a bit. Well, well, well we, uh, we kind of kill ourselves by accident on occasion. It's become a bit of a ritual, but we drink our parents' venom to prove ourselves, and sometimes you die if you're too weak. But we have ways to bring Rosary back from the grasp of death, as long as it's from our own venom, so it's okay, right? Basilus sighed. Whatever, we humans essentially do the same thing. Used to be 21, but as soon as we started sending everyone off to fight the Azarians, that apparently changed. But as soon as a kid hits 18, they drink themselves into a drunken stupor that used to require a stomach pump or a lot of vomiting. A lot of times we could get alcohol poisoning from that and nearly die. The only difference is we never once glimpsed the veil or got special veil powers like so many of your cultures. Bastard stopped there and blinked a couple of times before he started rambling to himself. Wait, wait, wait. How is it that every other culture we've met has been able to not only see the veil but also experience it? Why are we the ones out? There has to be some sort of reason for it. Wait, I have Amaran's memories. Maybe now that I've ascended to an immortal form, my mind will be able to handle the info dump. <laughs>